To access the new version of Google Sites, go to sites.google.com slash new, or use the waffle in your Google Drive to choose Sites, and then New Google Sites. Any sites that you have already created will be displayed here, and they are located in your Google Drive account also. Give your site a name so you can find it easily in your drive by clicking where it says Untitled and changing that to something more specific. If you were to peek quickly in your Google Drive, you would see your site already available in Recent. And accessing your site from your drive is a quick and easy way to locate it when you are ready to make some changes. The first thing you will want to do is to select a theme for your site by visiting the Themes tab. Your choice here will primarily govern your font styles and colors for line dividers and some other layout elements. Within a theme, you can adjust the accent color and make a few changes to the font style. This standard dark gray header is pretty plain and boring, so you can customize your header by clicking on it. Header type, adjust the size of the header, and change image allows you to upload or select an existing background. I'll choose select to show you all of the choices in the gallery. If you don't like any of these, you can search copyright free images right here. And if you can't find any images that you like, remember you can always upload your own. Google will adjust your header image for readability, but if you don't like their adjustments, you can undo them. Most websites are going to need more than just a home page, so let's create some more. To create additional pages, go to the Pages tab and then click the Add Page icon. Add as many pages as you want or need. And if you want something to be a subpage, just click on it and drag it onto the name of the parent page. Notice how Google adds a lovely navigation menu for you automatically. You may want different header images for your subpages, and the procedure to change any of these header images is the same as we covered earlier. Now that we have framed out the site, let's explore a couple of different ways to add content. Go back to the Insert tab to access your content creation tools. These are the most basic ways to add items, and of them you will primarily use the text box and image tool. Clicking on text box adds a text box to your page. This is handy obviously for adding text-based content. You can also use it to hyperlink to other pages. Just open the web page or item in another tab. Copy the address at the top of the page. If you are linking to something like a Google document, just make sure that document is shared so that anyone with the link can view it. After you've copied the link, go back to your site and highlight the text you want to become a hyperlink. Then use the chain link icon on the toolbar and you have just made it so that when people click on this word, it will take them to the hyperlinked page. Text boxes can also be resized to make room for a picture or another text box next to it. A shortcut to adding content is just to double click wherever you would like something added to your page. I will elect to add an image from the tool palette this time. If you've already found an image on Google Images, you can add it by its URL or address. To find an image's URL, just right click on it and choose copy image address. Go back to your site and paste that information here. Alternately, you can search copyright free Google Images or look for images on your Google Drive. Once you've added any image to your website, you can resize it, hyperlink it so that when someone clicks on the picture, it takes them someplace else. You can also crop it using Google's built in tool. Images can also be copied and pasted directly from Google Images. or dragged and dropped, so there are many, many ways to add pictures to your website. 
To rearrange the content items on your site, just drag and drop them. If you're having a hard time grabbing them, use the little grid of dots that appears near the top of text boxes. And sometimes when you drop an item, it will be adjusted to fit the area you placed it into. If you want to group some items together, you drag and drop them on top of each other until you see a thin blue line appear. This picture and this text box will now move as one grouped unit. Double click to choose one of the items in this group to move it separately out of the group, which essentially ungroups the items. Line dividers can help create division on your site, and as you build, you'll notice that Google views your page in different sections or chunks, and you can adjust the background style of each area to add emphasis. The background color here is dictated by what you chose in that themes panel, but you can also elect to use an image for a background to really add some visual appeal. Something must be located in each section, so if I delete the text box, my section disappears, but I can add the text box back in and basically put a bunch of empty spaces here to size the section to just how I want it to be. To preview how your site looks, click on the preview button. It will allow you to see what the site is going to look like on computer screens, iPads, and even phones. That is the very, very basics of creating a new Google site. And I'm going to cover how to use some of the more advanced options over here, like YouTube videos and adding items from Drive. But let me first show you how to publish your site. All of the changes I, I am making to my site are auto-saving, which is great, but nothing is viewable to anyone else until I actually publish those changes. The very first time you click publish, you will need to give your website an address and determine who can visit it. All websites in Jeffco start with this address, so my site will be sites.google.com, Jeffco Schools, US, demo site 299. And I'm going to change it so that anyone on the web can visit my site. If I went with the first option, people would have to sign into Jeffco with a Jeffco Gmail to even be able to see my site. Then click Publish. You can readjust your publishing options at any time by using the drop-down menu, and there's an option here to view the published site. Your published site won't have any of the editing tools along the side. When you're done, close the Preview tab or click the pencil to continue editing. Okay, now let's cover some more advanced tools that can really enhance your website. I'm going to use a new page to show the various ways to add some of those embedded items, including YouTube and Google Drive. If you would like a YouTube video on your website, just click that YouTube button and search for the video you are looking for. Once added, you can resize a video just like any other object but you will need to be in preview mode to actually view the video. The rest of the tools focus mostly on adding in items from your Google Drive. You can embed a Google Doc right on your page by clicking the Docs button and browsing to the correct item. You get a preview of your document and can resize this viewing pane. Visitors will also get this pop-out arrow, so it's okay to leave items as these small little thumbnails to be clicked on if you want. This lets you put several thumbnails side by side. It's really, really important to make sure all of these items are shared in your Google Drive so that others can view them. And I will use that pop out option to actually open my documents to check this. When I hover over the share button for this document, I can see that the sharing settings are just fine to allow others to view it. But when I go back and open this document, I see that it's private, which means it will not be visible to anyone who visits my website. I will adjust that by clicking Share, Advanced, and changing it to anyone with the link can view. Now let me go back to my site and I will add in a Google Slides presentation. These look great on a web page and are a really useful tool for slideshows or to share a lot of different images. I'll click Slides in the Insert menu and scroll or search for my presentation. Once added to the page, use the gear icon up here to adjust the behavior of your slides to auto start and loop if that's what you want it to do. As with any item you add in from Drive, make sure it is shared so that others can view, not edit it. 
You can truly add anything that lives in your Google Drive to your website following the same procedure. You can even add in a shared folder, which is a quick and efficient way to share a long list of items. Always remember to publish your site after you make any changes so that your site visitors see the latest, greatest additions to your website. And to help others find your website, just go to your home page and then click the chain link icon. This is the link you want to turn into your teacher if you are making this website for a project. That is a quick tour of the new Google Sites. If you have any questions, just come see me during your off block or during ICE.